Hi, everybody. Welcome to the huddle. Scott Taylor, Cody Bandura, back again. It's great to be back. Um, we had, we've had so much fun over the last couple of months interviewing high school football players, high school coaches, um, going out to these camps. Um, one of my favorite interviews is finally going to run this week. Which one? It's the first time I've ever seen a grown man cry on camera. Well, he didn't really cry, just his eyes got really red. But Rick Simons, who has been a legendary coach and player at Elmwood High School, um, I, I think maybe one of the legends of Elmwood High School, finally years. got a championship after 55 years of the program. Uh, and Rick Simons, um, our interview from the uh, Winnipeg High School Football League Awards Dinner is going to be the first up today on the show. It is a tremendous interview because, um, yeah, That's Nathan Fokker in this program, but but he's he's been through it all. He knows it all, and it was a tremendous win for them. And of course, you went out to the uh, the award ceremony, the ring ceremony at Elmwood. Um, it's great stuff. The story of the Elmwood High School Giants. We're going to get to that right away. This is the huddle. It's another week. Scott and Cody. We're community created on Shaw TV, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the huddle, Scott Taylor, and one of the legends of Manitoba coaching. And I know you're laughing because you've always been so modest and you don't think about it. But you mentioned to me before we came on that in 97 98 at Elmwood, you coached 13 teams. Well, there was a need, and nobody was doing it. Oh, by the way, this is Rick Simons. Coach Rick Simons. <laughs> and, but, you know, it, was, it got better as we went along because our principals recognized the need. They started hiring more teachers who would coach. So as the years went off, my load became less. But it's been terrific because the quality of people they brought in, the opportunities they've given to the kids, it's been amazing. Um, how did it feel for you? to be part of the team that won Elmwood's first championship? <laughs> well, let's see. I was a player for Elmwood once upon a time, back when we were the Eskimos in the 70s. I was the captain of one basketball team. I was a cornerback for the football team. And to come those 40-odd years and be part of the first one, then right after the game, it was great because Bill Petrie, who was one of the star quarterbacks we had back in the day, uh, Eldon Duick, who is Ryan Duick's dad, right? he's a middle school principal in Steinbeck, just to shake hands with these gentlemen and know that they were still connected and part of it was one of the greatest feelings I ever had because it spans generations. And those people still support Elmwood to this day, and they're so proud of the kids in the school. And that's all I can ask because these people made a difference and they've paved the way for the kids. Andrew Ricard said to me that it was important for him as one of the captains to win for the community because he said on his Facebook page he had old veterans, guy who was played oh. years ago, send him messages, yeah. go get them, go win the big one. Absolutely. Well, I grew up in the neighborhood. Yeah. I can't walk to work. I live 20 minutes away. I can't walk because... It takes me an hour and a half or more to get home because everybody wants to ask me about the team and stuff. Uh, you know, the community is totally bought into it. They're wonderful people. And it was funny because uh, when we held the first playoff game ever held in Elmwood High yeah. this year, the, one of the people from league says, but I thought there'd be more people. Well, the game started at 3 o'clock. By the time we left the field, you couldn't walk six inches because of all the people who had showed up they after they got off after work. work and, yeah. yeah, so it was an incredible feeling, and you could just feel the pride. To be part of that is the greatest feeling in the world because it was a community doing something, not just individuals. How much help were you to our friend Nathan Falk, who called himself a hockey baseball guy when he took over this team, <laughs> and now he's built himself a, a, a championship club? I in four years, five years? I don't know how much help I was. I just do what I do. And everybody, he allows everybody to do their job and gives you free reign to do it. I mean, he's even-handed. Uh, he's fair to people. I, I mean, I love the man because he's honest, he does his job, and he means everything he says. So, you know, to work with somebody, oh, you. absolutely, with somebody like that in charge, the rest of us just can go say, this is how I'm coaching the defensive backs, this is how I'm coaching the line, and it all comes together. Now, when I said at the start that Rick is a legend, I, I wasn't exaggerating, because you've been doing this for 30-odd years. Yeah. I mean, it, it, this isn't something that just happened yesterday. No. Um, I mean, you were coaching in the 70s. 
Uh, actually, the first co football team I coached was in the 70s. Yeah. Uh, I did some peewee and stuff over at uh, Tom's Community Center. So it was, it, it, it's maybe 35 years ago. Well, you started like I said, coaching. I took a couple of years break while I was going to university. Then once I uh, got my first placement at school, I was right back to coaching and everything from softball to volleyball, gymnastics, believe it or not. But you said you took this year off. You went slow this year. You only had three teams. Yeah, I slowed down. <laughs> I had to. Other people can do the job now, so I don't have to be as territorial. And it's well, great because we, well, I mean, when I look at the quality of coaches that have been hired in our school, right. I mean, leave it to the experts. I mean, I love track and field, I love uh, volleyball, I love all those sports, but we got people who are so good, I can just concentrate on doing a couple of things better. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. It's great to be a winner. <laughs> First time in 50 years for this Elmwood Club. I'll I think tell it's spectacular. You. Well, like I said, the good people finally had their day in the sun. And I'm not talking about us as a team. I'm talking about an entire All community, community that built, it, built yeah. for years and years. And that's no disrespect to any other team because we played some terrific teams this year. And I respect every single one of them to the nth degree. But for these kids to do what they did, that's a fabulous achievement. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Rick Simons, the defensive backs coach with the Elmwood Giants. You also coached girls uh, soccer? Varsity girls soccer, soccer varsity and girls, and girls basketball. basketball. And I get to be the convener for Winnipeg School Division Basketball. Hey, you got to have something to do in your spare time. <laughs> <laughs> this is the huddle. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the huddle. Scott Taylor. Um, we've had uh, uh, quite a night here at the Winnipeg High School Football League Awards Banquet, and um, one of the big winners is beside me. The winner of the Heavy Metal Design Coach of the Year, Bo Wilkes, the Garden City Gophers. Congratulations, Coach. Thanks, well done. Tell us about your team this year, and why are you sitting here and not somebody else? Well, uh, <laughs> I'm lucky to be surrounded by a pretty pretty good coaching staff that, that help uh, help kind of uh, uh, make things easy on, on, on me at, at the top, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of hard work and uh, players. Uh, some good veterans this year that, that kind of helped lead us, set a good example, and a lot of guys. Well, we've met Keenan Coswin and Justin yeah, Casper on the show. Guys. Great kids, terrific Absolutely. kids, and both with great futures. They can do pretty much whatever they want to do. Yeah, they'll be uh, they'll be successful on and off the football field, no matter what they choose to do. Both of them, uh, good families, good upbringing. Uh, pleasure to have in class in the hallways of our school, and definitely in the football field too. Now you you're more at Garden City than just the football coach. You've been yeah. there for seven years. Yeah, I did uh, two years of student teaching at the school uh, in the phys ed department. Uh, and then was lucky enough to get to get hired there right away. Uh, great school, great staff, great admin. Uh, and uh, my in earlier on was uh, when Rick Rick was the head coach. Uh, I was there as a student teacher, and I started coaching receivers. And then I graduated on to be the defensive coordinator, and then uh, worked under him for for a year or two, and then uh, transitioned on to be the high, the high school head coach. So it's been a it's been a, a nice uh, a nice way to, to ascend to ascend the ladder, so to speak, uh, uh, with a lot of good support around me. So it's been good. You, you spend so much time with, with football. I mean, uh, be the, yeah. the head football coach at a high school. Absolutely. There's a lot of work outside of the work you do. Yes. It, 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 it's interesting to me that in the United States, a guy like you would, would make huge amounts of money, more as the football coach than, than as a, a high school teacher. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not that way in Canada, is it? No. No, not at all. But uh, the reason why we have so many good people, uh, the coaching fraternity here, and especially in the high school league, uh, you, 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 it'd be nice, but you don't do it for, for the, uh, the dollars. It's, it's ni nice like this and, and being able to, to help see young men grow and uh, and kind of fill that competitive void that you know you don't have as a player anymore you know there's a reason why a lot of us get into coaching you enjoyed playing you had a lot of good coaches when you were younger and you want to uh, keep that going so uh, there's lots of other things that 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 are rewarding more than uh, more than what uh, dollars dollars could definitely fill um when you played um, was the game as good as it is today the high school game yeah I don't think so. It's grown so much. You know, uh, I think of myself as still a pretty young coach. Uh, I graduated yep. high school in '04. Sure. Played at Maples. Loved it. But that's a decade ago. It, yeah, it's it is. And uh, I think at the time there were two divisions, um, the Double A and at the time Single A. Um, 16 teams, I'd assume. 16 to 18 teams. 
uh, now we're at 32 uh, and growing. So the game's expanded everywhere, and it's uh, when that happens, the level of competition increases too. Uh, and the athletes are better. Yeah, I think it's just a lot of people, a lot of young, young, young men and, and girls as well, playing playing the game at a younger age. And uh, just the football we were talking earlier, football is growing across the province, and it's definitely uh, at its peak at the high school league. And, and we're happy to be part of it. What's the future like? Um, the Gophers going to be as good next year? Uh, we, we, we certainly think so. Uh, we graduate. Now, think, people may not know you went to the final this year. We did, yeah. We went to the finals and uh, double A. Yeah, lost to St. Paul's, who were the better team that day for sure. Um, we graduate 13 players. Of course, when I when I look down from the press box, St. Paul's had an army and you had like 10 guys on the bench. Yeah, this year was the first year we had uh, a little bit of a smaller squad overall. Uh, at our peak, I think we had 36. Uh, and then as the season, season wore on with, with injuries and things, I think we were down to. Yeah, Keenan and, and Justin both said that you were banged up. Yeah, of that final. A few, a few things. That's just the way the game goes, uh, for sure. Um, it, it was, it was interesting challenge, and that's that's a reason why I think uh, I gotta tip my hat to all of our assistant coaches because it's not easy when you gotta juggle things like that with with, with, with smaller, uh, shorter numbers, uh, smaller squad overall. Uh, to do what we did was was very, uh, although it didn't end the way you wanted to end. It was uh, with, with some time to reflect. It was definitely uh, a lot of a lot of uh, good things that happened this year. Great kids. Yeah, it, that, that makes it easy. They're always yours. You know, uh, I'm not a father, uh, not yet anyway. But uh, you know, you, you take the kids and you. See them, you see them every day, you see them in the hallway, you see them in the classroom, and they kind of become yours. So for, for all their faults as well, you accept them for who they are, and you hope that they can learn something along the way. And uh, A lot of good things from guys who didn't always uh, do, do the thing you'd hope them to do, uh, whether it was something in grade 9 or 10, you saw the maturity level that, that developed with a lot of the guys. It's definitely uh, rewarding to see them, them do that. And then even be able to be like, acknowledged tonight at, at our awards tonight. A couple of guys that won, won awards are definitely guys who took some big strides with us, and we're very proud to be uh, part of the reason why they're doing so well. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. We, we, we go back a little bit, kind of. A little bit. It's, it's, it's sort of like the um, uh, six degrees of separation. Somewhat, yeah. Because Joe Aiello and I used to work together at City. Yes. And you're an Aiello, sort of. Uh, my mom's the Aiello. I'm a Wilkes, but uh, on the Italian side of the family, you know, a third, fourth cousin is, is like your brother or your sister. So uh, grew up with Joe around and always at the sports show and, you know, here in UN92 in the morning with the sports report. It's, uh, it's kind of funny how things work. Those are the days. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Bo Wilkes, the uh, coach of the year, the uh, heavy metal design coach of the year here at the uh, Winnipeg High School Football League Awards Banquet. We're at uh, Canada Inns Polo Park. Um, yes, we're on tape, but we're sort of live here tonight and uh, we're having a lot of fun. We're coming back right after this. This is the the huddle we are football in manitoba community created on shaw tv hi everybody welcome back to the huddle i have a soapstone carving mm -hmm. it's not mine however it belongs to jen humeni mm -hmm. who was just named the volunteer of the year in the winnipeg high school football mm -hmm. league congratulations thank you very much well done now thank you. um how does a math science teacher become the football <laughs> volunteer of the year? Tell me that story. Well, I've always loved sports growing up, and it's really great to help out with the kids in any capacity. So I've worked with our high school hockey team and our football team, and it's just been a really, really good experience. So what is it you do? Um, with the football team? Yep. Well, I, uh, I run our websites, I do stats, I take care of all of the finances, clothing orders, um, all that kind of stuff That's academically. That's not a volunteer. That's a full-time <laughs> job. There, there's a bit. Yeah, there is a bit, but it keeps but me it's busy. Like every Anything else with high school football? I mean, the coaches are volunteers. Yes, absolutely. So everybody's kind of a volunteer. Yeah, we're And a the big coaches family. couldn't get the job done unless they had somebody. <laughs> I mean, I know coaches. They're not going to do the, the 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 kind of thing that you do from a, an administrative standpoint. Yeah, absolutely. There is a lot that goes on behind the scenes that people don't realize, but I appreciate it because it gives the coaches the opportunity to coach and do what they do on the field. I don't mind doing the stuff. Um, taking care of all the other work. So. And you do the hockey team as well? Um, I did when we had a hockey team, but we no, don't right, have a hockey yeah. team anymore, unfortunately. So uh, Now, tell us about you. Um, what's your background? Did you, did you have a sports background? Um, I do, yeah. I'm a, I'm a big sports fan. I grew up in rural Manitoba and just thrilled Where? to teach a little tiny town called Arburg, Manitoba. I know Arburg so, quite well. <laughs> um, you have a hockey team in the Keystone Junior B hockey Oh, yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah. The Ice Dogs, yes. Arburg Ice Dogs. I got yeah. two cousins that play on there. No kidding. Shout out to Kayla and Connor, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so yeah. So it was. I just. I've always had a love for sports, and 
it's just a really, really teaching gives you that opportunity to work with kids on another level. So, but you have to go a, a little above and beyond if you're going to win that, because that's pretty nice. <laughs> I take that home. It is, and it's such an honor coming from Fran Taylor and her family. Um, she worked at Maples, and I've, it's just been a pleasure to work with her uh, in years past. So it means the world to me to come from her because I just know how strong the football family is. And so you're going to keep doing I appreciate this. Appreciate it. Absolutely. I get the impression that this Absolutely. is going to stop. Absolutely. This is just starting. So right. you're going to win a bunch of this. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I hope so. I Congratulations. Hope so. Thank you very much. Well done. Jen Humeni, the um, uh, Arnie Taylor Award winner, this beautiful soapstone <laughs> carving, this beautiful trophy as the Volunteer of the Year in the Winnipeg High School Football League. Well done. Thank there you very you much. Um, this is The Huddle. We're live at the Winnipeg High School Football League uh, Awards Banquet. We are on tape. Uh, we are on <laughs> delay, but we're, we're live tonight. Okay. You and me are live. Perfect. Um, we'll be back. Uh, this is The Huddle, community created on Shaw TV. This is the Premier Football Factory. Dave Donaldson's camp, and uh, Brody St. Cyr is with me, linebacker with Churchill. Uh, are you having any fun? Uh, tons of fun. It's probably one of the best camps I've ever been to. Now, why do you say that about the Premier Football Factory? Um, probably because I've only been to one or two camps, and it's really cool to meet some people that have been in professional football, such as the NFL, CFL, and a lot of players that have been through the NCAA. And How far do you want to take football? Um, I would really love to play juniors, like for the rifles, but I just want to see what football, what I can get out of football and how far I can go with it. Okay, tell us a little bit about your background. When did you start? Why did you start? Um, my first year was actually with a different school. I was with the River East Kodiaks. Then um, I moved, but why I started playing football is because I really enjoyed watching on TV, like all the big plays by the big players and just seeing how, what they did and how they did. And I really want to try out. And then after my first year with River East, I really fell in love with football. And now you're going back to River East. Brody St. Cyr, we got the news right here first, is leaving Churchill and heading back to River East. Yes, sir. Um, are you excited about that? Yes, sir. Very excited. Now, you enjoyed playing at Churchill. Yes, it's, very, it's a very good school. I'm not going to take anything away from them. I really enjoy playing there. So now, tell us, what happens this season? Do you know anything about the River East program, or is this going to be brand new for you? Um, uh, probably a new defense, but a lot of the players are graduating, such as Dalvin, Hillary, uh, Sean Wake, Dan Warmer. So it's gonna be a really, it's gonna be a new defense and new offense look for River East. So it's gonna be something different for you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Brody St. Cyr, linebacker, Churchill slash River East. Um, here at the uh, Premier Football Factory. Dave Donaldson's Premier Football Factory. We are The Huddle. We'll be back. We've got lots more coming up right here from the University of Manitoba. This is The Huddle. It's community created on Shaw TV. Hi everybody, welcome back to the huddle. I'm Cody Bandura. To my right, we got the quarterback for the River East Junior Varsity team, Noah Lexier. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, how are you doing? Pretty good. How, how, so is this your first time at the camp? Yeah, it is, it's really great. And what, how, uh, what kind of things have you learned so far? Just like everything, the fundamentals, like your foot, footwork, our motion, throwing motion, it's good. Okay, yeah, nice man. And uh, so how old are you? I'm um, 15. 15, when's your birthday? June. June, so yeah. you'll be 16? Yeah. So you'd be, you're in grade 10 right now? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how did you guys' this season go? Uh, we we didn't do that bad, but we got knocked out first round of the playoffs. What was your guys' record in the regular season? Two and four. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, whatever. You guys, uh, w do you plan on playing for the varsity team next year? Are you going yeah, to, yeah, definitely. And you're going to try out as quarterback? Yeah. Yeah? And how old were you when you started playing football? And where did you start playing football? I started playing football at River East. Really? This yeah. is your first year playing football? Yeah. And you're starting quarterback? Yeah. Nice. That's a, that's a great story. Well, did you play any uh, sports before that? Uh, I played soccer, but... That, that's it? Soccer. No hockey? No nothing no. else? Just this? This is your first year, and now you're playing quarterback? And what yeah. are your plans for... Are you going to want to continue playing? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, and you want to... And what about after high school? I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Yeah? You're, yeah. Not, you're just kind of playing it by seeing what happens. Yeah, okay, well, that's great, man. Um, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I'm Cody Bandura. This is The Huddle. We are community created on Shaw TV. Hi, welcome back to The Huddle. I'm Cody Bandura. To my right, we got a Kildonan East Reaver, my favorite, because I'm also an alumni myself. We got Ben Mikulov. Hi. How's it going, man? Good, good. You doing good today? Yeah. yeah. So you're 17, right? Yep. You're in grade 12? Yep. And you're a punter slash middle linebacker middle for the Reavers, yeah. right? Yes. Pretty impressive. How big are you? I'm around six feet, um, 195 pounds. Yeah? Yeah. That's, that's decent size, man. <laughs> Pretty good for a punter. Yeah. Middle linebacker, nothing wrong with that. So how old were you when you started playing football, Ben? 
Um, I was probably around seven. I started the earliest you could uh, first year. I think it was Terminator. Now it's called Crunchers, I think. But that's when I started. I went all the way through, played uh, played all the way up to Bantam in community, and then went up to grade 12 of high school. So you've started at a really young age, and you've played for 10 years now at least, right? Yeah. Yeah, and you played for the Eastside Eagles, I'm guessing, too, yes, right? Yes, Okay, nice. They got a good program, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. I'm well aware of it. <laughs> and what position did you first start out playing as, as a seven? year old ah. see it was Terminator so I think the rule was you played a different position Everything, every yeah. game so I couldn't tell you I, I knew early though that I wanted to be defense yeah I wanted to hit some kids um, so pretty sure it had to be something with defense that sparked and stuck with it so growing up once you got to about 10 did, is that when you started playing defense full-time or what I think yeah around Adam Peewee is when is when I was put on defense stayed on defense and you've been linebacker the whole time or did you get to go around cornerback safety um, I think I was always too big for most of those okay. I think I stayed linebacker or if anything I went on the end on the line and when did you start punting uh, that's a tough question. Uh, my brother actually started punting before me for Eagles. And so he was about, I think, two or three years in front of me. So I, he would be kicking at home or something, and yeah. I would kind of try it out. So it had to be around minor bantam or uh, even peewee. Did, did you guys have a soccer background as well? Did he? Uh, yeah, we both actually yeah. played uh, indoor soccer and outdoor soccer for a while and football at the same time actually. Is that the only sports you guys played? Or is there, you guys play hockey as well? Or uh, lacrosse? No, we didn't really play so hockey just, in the winter. Hockey, uh, in the winter was indoor yeah, soccer. So just much. football Running, and soccer yeah. basically. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what are your plans after high school? Are you going to continue to play football? Is that what you're trying to yeah, do? I'm yeah, I'm going to keep on trying out for uh, the Winnipeg Rifles yeah. and see how that goes. And your brother plays for the rifles he right, plays now. right now. He's the yeah, punter, he, he right? Punts, yes. Are you going to try to challenge him for that spot or what? Uh, I think he's uh, pretty far past me by now, so I'll try, but it's not going to. You never know, right? Gonna, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. And uh, so have you thought about university at all or no? Uh, not really. Uh, I'm in electrical vocational right now, so I'm thinking of going to uh, Red River. Okay. And going with that, so then that kind of helps with uh, rifles. Cause so you're just going to go plan to go to school and then play junior football and see where that goes after yeah, that. Yeah, see how far football takes me, go as far okay. as I can with football, and uh, fall back on electrical. So what? Uh, what's your favorite? What's some of your favorite football teams, CFL or NFL? Uh, don't watch too much NFL. Um, so if we go CFL. I would say the Bombers, even though I didn't grow up in Winnipeg, um, and probably go to Calgary yeah, after that. Yeah, really? So. Okay. And what kind of music do you like to listen to before you get uh, out on that field? Mm, not really a music guy. No? More of a, more of a just walking around thinking what I have to do. Yeah, just get into like the that. zone, yeah. get get into business, yeah. right? Right there. I haven't really been in work, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And because I went to KE, mm -hmm. you go to KE, I have to ask you a question. Who's your favorite teacher? <laughs> um, my favorite teacher would probably be Mr. Hawkins. Uh, he's a math teacher. I had him in grade nine uh, for AP math, and he's also a football coach for the team, so well, he would have been my favorite. It was great talking with you, Ben. Yeah. And uh, I'm Cody Bandura. This is The Huddle. We are Football Manitoba, and we're community created on Shaw TV. Bandura, we're here at the University of Manitoba for Dave Donaldson's Premier Football Factory. I have Lucas Capper here. How are you doing today, Lucas? Good. How are you? I'm doing all right. So what position do you play? I play uh, defensive back. Okay. Yeah. For what school? Uh, Kildonan East Collegiate. And how old are you? Uh, I'm 16 years old right now. And when's your birthday? Uh, February, so it's coming up. Okay, so you'd be 17. So yeah. you're grade 11 or going, yeah, yeah and you're grade going 11. into grade 12. Yeah. How'd you guys' season play out this year? Uh, we did okay. We didn't finish the greatest, but we started pretty good. And what was you guys' overall record in, in uh, the regular season? We finished two and five. And so you... we went to playoffs, but lost first round. And what about next year? You guys uh, having a big turnover? You guys returning uh, lots of players? Yeah, we're returning quite a bit. We're also looking to bring in some new guys because our O line's looking pretty small right now. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And. Uh, what about this football camp? Is this your first time here? Uh, no, I believe this is my third time here, and it's just awesome to be here. You learn things every year? Yeah, every year I learn something new and just get better. What specifically have you learned this year? Uh, this year they're really going over our shades and just not letting the receiver cross our face and okay, really nice. going on that. So, uh, What are your plans for after high school? 
Uh, I'm going looking into go as far as I can with football, but also at my school we do the trades program, so I'm looking to see how that will play over. And I'm actually a Kildonan East alumni, so I know all about those trades yeah, too. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> yeah, and so I'm glad that I got to meet you. Yeah, you too. You have a good camp. I'm Cody Bandura. This is The Huddle. We are community created on Shaw TV. Wow! Did we have a lot of folks on this week? No, it was Rick great. Rick Simons, a tear. I like the tear. Uh, Bo Wilkes was on this week. Um, uh, who else was on? Uh, Brady St. Cyr, I remember, I recall. Um, 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 who else did we talk to? We talked to Ben Mikulif, um, whose brother kicked for uh, the rifles, rifles, and he kicks for the uh, Euro School. Killed on East Reavers. Uh, killed on an East Reavers, Euro School. Um, Lucas Capra was here. We had lots of great kids. Thanks for the interviews. No you problem. You did a great job. Um, it, it, it was just another terrific, uh, long, exhausting show with some great kids, and uh, we love it when we get to talk to those high school kids. We'll do it again all next week. Scott Taylor, Cody Bandura, this has been The Huddle. We're community created on Shaw TV, and we'll be back next week. See you then.